What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside a fresh new face, Howdy. Aiden Straw. No, I, I like to let it hang. Oh. It's not on you. It's not on you. It's not on you. <laughs> I like to keep the kids guessing out there. Did okay. Greg screw something up? Or And they look at their phone and they think it's dead. It's Aiden Strawhan. Hey, Aiden. How are Howdy. you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excellent, Aiden. Here's what we need to do right at the top, all right? I'm doing the thing already where I unhook the mic and I lean back with it because we have to have a conversation. All right. It's RTX. I'm in the hotel lobby. We were, oh, we're waiting on Nick Scarpino to get his coffee, of course, because that's how we got to wait for uh, Nick Scarpino all the time. Some kids come by, take a photo, whatever. Eventually, you were sitting on the couch ignoring us, and then you stand up and you're like, hey, I just wanted to say hey. I'm Aiden. Uh, I am in the industry. I, I live out in Berkeley. I, you know, I do a whole bunch of freelance stuff like that. I was like, oh, that's really cool. We talked for two seconds. And I'm like, you should come on Kind of Funny Games Daily. And then that's all I know about you. Yeah. So you need to fill me in on the rest of this. All right. I know that you freelance. I know that you live in Berkeley or you're going to school in Berkeley. I know nothing else. Tell me everything. Okay. Why do, who are you? How will people know you? Where have you worked before? Uh, well, first off, I wasn't ignoring you. I was fangirling. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know how it is. I just assume yeah. there's a person there oh, annoyed God, no, that all these so other funny. kids I'm, want photos. I was sitting there and I was, I was texting one of my friends. I was like, oh my God, Greg Miller's in front of me. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, who? I yeah, have no right? idea who that is. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, hi, my name is Aiden. I do freelance. Um, you've probably seen me on GameSpot. I am the weekend editor. Um, and I also work for IGN in the anime section. I once was working on the Snapchats. Oh, nice. Um, with Cassidy. Okay. Uh, and that was a ton of fun. Um, but now I just kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, I have a bunch of big stories coming up in places I can't quite tell you about yet. Uh, but they will hopefully be up soon in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I was hoping to get them up a little bit sooner, but you know how life is. Sure, and, uh, it gets in the way. Was according to plan. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, this fall I am going after my master's at UC Berkeley. Um, in? And, um, oh gosh, I'm at the J School, so. Perfect, all right, excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, And so I'll be going after new media. Not really sure why we still call it new media, but. Because <laughs> your professors are still probably very old. Uh, no, actually. Young. Are they all hip young professors? Uh, well, yeah, I think so, so far. Okay. That's okay. what they've showed okay. me. Uh, one of them is actually a Pulitzer Prize winner. So right, that'll no be deal. very interesting. Did uh, he or she go to Mizzou? Uh, no, they did damn. not. God it's damn. actually funny that you mentioned Mizzou. I grew up not too far from there. Really? Yeah. Where? Uh, are you familiar with Nixa? Yes, I am. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really the first person ever. Dude, you do Columbia Daily Trivia and afterwards you start to meet a lot of small communities and see a lot of different Missouri uh, stuff yeah, that you never knew yep. before. Grew up in the Ozarks. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Lived there for 14 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, moved out to Florida and went to undergrad there um, and all that jazz. So Now, do you mind me asking how old are you? I am 22. Oh my God. I am a baby. Oh my God. You're going for your master's at 22? Yeah. Oh, geez, Louise. You're, yeah, now I'm no, now I'm angry. Now I'm angry that you're so talented and good and you're 22. Lord have mercy. My goodness, you're going to make me blush. Uh, what have you been playing lately? Oh, gosh. Uh, so I got Games Pass recently and that's nice. been a blessing. Yeah. Um, the most recent thing I play is probably DMC. Oh, okay. Yeah, that game is awesome. Yeah, underrated, right? Because I think oh, it got pushed yeah. away from not being the Dante people expected. Yeah, right? Yeah. I actually don't mind the change. It's pretty good. Um, very fun, very stylistic. Um, that's something I've always really loved about Ninja Theory. So, oh, yeah. Um, what else have I been playing? Uh, Stardew Valley, Overcooked 2. Ah, Overcooked 2. Oh, Overcooked. Nice. Oh, nice. oh, boy. Yeah, Joey keeps yelling at me because she needs help on her version. Uh, uh -huh. And I have, I'm like so dedicated to the PlayStation version that I don't want to go play with her on Switch. I just want her to come over and play with me on PlayStation. I'll play with you, Joey. Okay, fine. <laughs> have it your way. Joey's in the other room. You can stay here while we do all our party modes today. You can do that with her. <laughs> Dope. Uh, but yeah, my partner and I, we can't get past like five, three. It's a nightmare. Yeah, 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 oh yeah. boy. Those Kevin levels too. They throw everything in the kitchen yeah, right? sink at you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Overcooked too. Good game. It's a very good game. Yeah. Well, if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with your questions, comments, bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then you can watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job, go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you it's fan oh god i forgot about this uh this month on patreon.com and patreon.com or no patreon.com slash kind of funny and patreon.com slash kind of funny games uh the fan mail is an autograph photo of nick scarpino the champ 
If you're watching on YouTube, I have the prototype of it that he wrote. He signed today on the morning show on his laser grid. He signed it to Andy. It says, to Andy, you suck, Nick the champ. So you can go over to Patreon, support us, keep the mics on and the lights on, and support whatever Nick's doing with his life. Uh, next piece of housekeeping for you, the Kind of Funny Extra Life t-shirt contest is back. You can submit your designs over at kindoffunny.com slash EL contest by August 31st. Voting begins in September, and the winning design will be printed as the official 2018 Kind of Funny Extra Life community shirt. Uh, and then today we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Stamps.com, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Five items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. I went karaoke last night. This is not one of the Roper Report items. Went karaoke last night. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I've got a good, Not I, I'm not hoarse. But I have a good gravitas to the voice I don't usually have. I can agree. Yeah, exactly, right? So I'm, it's like hard for me to think of what I'm saying because I'm so caught up in what I'm saying. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's kind of like when the guy drowns looking at his own reflection, but this time I'm drowning in my audio. Think about that, Cool Greg, all right? And I'm sorry, Cool Greg, you're getting the worst of it. You're wearing headphones. You're getting this beautiful voice pumped in. You can't focus on anything over there, I'm sure. Sorry. Yeah, as I know. Number one. IGN is scrubbing Philip Mewson from the site. Uh, of course, we've been covering here on Kind of Funny Games Daily all the plagiarism stuff that stemmed out of the Dead Cells review on IGN with uh, their former Nintendo editor, uh, Philip Mewson, who apparently plagiarized the Dead Cells article that went public. IGN looked into it. IGN pulled the review. IGN re-reviewed the game. IGN fired Philip or parted ways with him. Uh, then Philip put up a video on Friday that Gary and I talked about on Monday, basically being like, hey, I don't know how this happened. It's weird. Uh, and then he took a shot at Jason Schreier and Kotaku being like, if you can find more, find more. And then everyone on the internet found so much more. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, it reached <laughs> even more fever pitch, if you will, when Reset Era started continuing to add to this stuff, that stuff. I'm gonna, I mean, I can jump to Jason uh, at Kotaku who put this in his article about it today. The lengthy list of allegations against Mewson now includes a Bayonetta 2 review that drew from Polygon, a video that took word for word from a NeoGAF post, and a number of videos which Mewson reads excerpts from Wikipedia about topics like Super Mario Odyssey and Shantae, Half Genie Hero, good game, uh, as if he had written them. The list even includes an Octopath Traveler, uh, Octopath Traveler article that copied from one of his own IGN colleagues' reviews. Much to that writer's dismay. Tipsters have pointed, to, pointed me to dozens of instances in which Mewson took directly from other sources, which, I'm sorry, some of which are rounded up here. Even his LinkedIn resume is copied from a job template website. Uh, that all was boiling on Reset Era, getting sent over to Dan Stapleton, getting sent over to Perry Schneider at IGN. And finally, Dan tweeted out last night after already tweeting, hey, we're looking at this, tweets out, FYI, we've seen enough now, both from the thread and our own searches. I'm sorry, this is a longer sentence than that. FYI, we've seen enough now, both from our own, uh, both from the thread and our own searches, that we're taking down pretty much everything he did. It's a process, but you'll start seeing stuff come down tonight. Then Justin Davis, features editor over there, puts out deeply. Di I think he's features editor actually. I don't know anymore. That's what he was when I left. Um, What's Justin now? I'm not sure. Is he managing is. editor or something like that? Uh, I know he's high up now. I know someone else is handling features right now. Okay, then Justin Davis, big wig at IGN, will say, deeply disappointed and upset that it's looking more and more likely that we unwittingly hosted work that was directly lifted from or at best heavily derived from others. I assure you we are taking very active steps to remove it all and make it right. I feel betrayed. To those asking, all of our all of the author's scripted byline content is being proactively removed for now, regardless of whether it was found to have an issue. Some of it may re may be restored later. Some important coverage may be redone by other writers, and much of it will remain offline. It's so like right now, so if you go and look at some of the articles mm -hmm. there, there's just a thing that says, due to plagiarism concerns, this has been taken down. And I guess, yeah, they're vetting through it and trying to figure it out all on themselves. Uh, what a nightmare situation. Yeah, that nightmare is putting it lightly. Right. Uh, I mean, I appreciate the way that IGN has been handling it. 100%. Um, but, I mean, I, th I think it's professional, and I think it's the right thing to do. Um, and parting ways with him, obviously, was the right call. Of course. Um, but, I mean, this is hard on all of us. I mean, I'm just a freelancer, so it doesn't sure. hit me nearly as hard as it hits some of the staff, because I'm sure that they were friends with him, they cared about him, you know, right. and never felt like, oh, man, my friend would never do something as bad as this. Sure, the betrayal of trust, right? Yeah, Let alone exactly. as a colleague and a peer, but as a friend. You know, but, I mean... IGN has been going through a lot, and unfortunately, there has been a lot of that kind of stuff. Not necessarily plagiarism, but betrayal of trust when oh, it yeah. comes to friends, when it comes to colleagues. Oh, yeah. And so, I I don't know. I mean, I've kind of kept my tongue on all of this stuff, but... Uh, yeah, I think that was the thing. 
uh, in general. Obviously, we talked about it through, uh, throughout this week. We've talked about it with basically like, okay, let's not all dog pile. Let's do this, this, that, and the other. The mm-hmm. water cooler conversations we've had last night really seemed to be the thing that as this broke mm-hmm. that like it's it's this bad. It seemed like all bets were off because it was. I oh, Altano, yeah. Altano was tweeting about it. Fran tweeted about it. It was for the first time I think a catharsis moment where everyone felt like you know what there is no allegedly anymore there yeah, is no. no we don't like it's there's pretty, not yeah. i mean it's blatant and it's disappointing and i think it's a betrayal to not even just ign but the games journalism community of course at large. oh my god yeah you know because i mean when we look at ethics and games journalism what games journalism actually is yeah. you know in the true ethics of that sure of course but i mean <sighs> This goes against the entire fight for what that was supposed to be. Oh yeah, I mean, you figure and that's an ongoing thing that we talk about all the time here, right? And mm-hmm. you know it as well as I do. Especially you're 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 so active in it right now. The as games media, games journalism, enthusiast press, whatever you want to call it, influencers, mm-hmm. right? As we all, as we mature and as the media matures, we start to wrestle with these concepts. And mm-hmm. clearly, I mean, everyone knows looking around, right? Like that's at the forefront right now of how, how do personal beliefs and politics and objectivity and ethic and like, it's just such a mm-hmm. swirling storm right now that it really is the last thing you need is somebody who's going to come in and plagiarize their way through it and act exactly. like they want to get caught and get, go do all these different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy the door wrote in to kind of funny.com slash KFGD just like you can and says hey I totally get if it's not something you or if it's something you want to move on from but regarding Brian Altano's comments about games media outlets not having controls in place to check for plagiarism do you think it's something they should look into implementing it's impossible to do for videos but a lot of what's being found now in text can't which can be checked by a turn it in dot com type program what Brian said makes complete sense. Why the hell would anyone need to plagiarize writing about video games? But in light of recent events, would it be something worth implementing? Thanks. Of course, he's referencing a tweet from Brian. I, I mentioned without going into mm-hmm. specifics, but Brian uh, Altano tweeted out a heartfelt one last night of like how hard this has been on him and the fact that, yeah, like why would anyone do this about video games? Why would you? The whole point of this is that we're drawn to this career because we love this medium and love talking about games. So why would you go and plagiarize thoughts and opinions you could have yourself? Right. I mean, and I don't think turn it in is a bad idea at all. Yeah. Um, they use turn it in universities, you mm, know, mm. and you get caught plagiarizing at a university, you're gone. I'm unfamiliar you know? with it. So you what? Are. Yeah, I, when, back in my day when I was in university and at IGN, we carved everything into stone. So um, I don't yeah, know any you know, of these. Stone ages. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, no, what, new so, media ages now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're, you're out there with your futuristic Jordan the Forge glasses. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. What is turnitin.com? So anytime that you turn anything online, at least for the university that I went to before, uh-huh. uh, um, it automatically goes through turn it in hmm. um, which is just a program hmm. that the school buys into to make sure that you're not plagiarizing okay it will identify like common phrases kind of cite where they are where they can find them online um and flag those phrases yeah. um for plagiarism sure um and then if there's enough and there it's like a certain level of sure. like okay you know there's a moderate like risk of plagiarism here you know because of cliches or just of course phrases. lazy writing yeah lazy writing <laughs> you yeah. crutches yeah i know yeah, I've, I've had a couple of those <laughs> yeah I was, I was gonna say go ahead and look at all my ig interviews find those <laughs> the lazy writing not the plagiarism you'll never find i'm oh, kidding yeah, I, don't really my idea, I don't know don't make that threat i know right no yeah i dare you jason schreier it turns out I, my whole like my whole stories of playing games on the train with pertillo totally cribbed from somebody oh, else in their oh my dog. god right anyway um Gosh, what was I saying? Turn it in. Sorry, turn it in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's a useful tool, and I don't think that would be a bad um, tool to implement in the industry um, just for the sake of it. You know, yeah. when we've had something like this. Um, I mean, the only other thing I can say is that a lot of a lot of publications are relying on you to be a good journalist. Yeah. You know, and part of being a good journalist is not plagiarizing. Of course. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty high on the list. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, um, I, it, it's... I've seen this conversation a lot as to, well, what does IGN do from here, right? And it's a great question of, I think, well, now that this has happened, now that you see it reverberating back through, you know, a year of content since Philip's been there, mm-hmm. things getting pulled, uh, the staff morale, uh, the then public perception of, I think the majority of dialed in video game fans are like, oh man, this really sucks for IGN and mm-hmm. the writers. We, that's but there are people like, can't ever trust it. And like trolls, sure. But like people who are saying shit and this is the same thing that every tweet they put up for the next six months will have a reference to this in it. Every mm-hmm. review they put up, well, where would you cube this from? Even if people just are just trying to be cute about it. That wears on you. Mm-hmm. And so what does it do to IGN's editorial 
policy and how they go through. I don't know. I think that like what you're saying is a good idea, right? Because they're they're going to need something of like, hey, we've reassessed how we do everything, mm-hmm. and that we, obviously we never had to deal with this before, and now we do. But that's that's a conversation that's happened behind closed doors so many times. Mm-hmm. Of I, you know, somebody uh, on our subreddit, the kind of funny subreddit today. Obviously, this is a hot topic over there too. I saw somebody call out there. I think it might have been kebabs. If it is, shout out to kebabs. Uh, talking about, hey, well, it's like how when Greg said he got hired at IGN, like my first review at IGN I wrote, was very proud of it, walked over to Chris Roper, and I was like, I wrote the, my review, and he's like, great, publish it. And I was like, don't you want to read it and fact check? It? Like, not fact check it, but like spell check. And like, he's like, yeah. no, no, I'm sure you're fine. And I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, that was such a, a nightmare for me coming from a journalism that sounds school. sounds like a nightmare. Coming from a newspaper. <laughs> but that was IG in 2007. You know what I mean? That was IGN old guard. That Nowadays, are you kidding me? Like my final reviews, Dan Stapleton were tear apart. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. he, he goes through and does, like you get vetted on so many different levels. Mm-hmm. But again, the vetting there is what's your argument? Are you backing it up? Are you being succinct enough? Are you being mm-hmm. entertaining enough? Like it's not now there's this added level of how do we check for plagiarism mm-hmm. and like how do we go through and do that? I would think that, yeah, you will see that ripple and I think you will see other people oh, start yeah. to do it. And again, it's part of our industry, our side of the industry growing up. And suddenly this is something you have to worry about because it's happened. And I I think this was a good event, not a good event, but good in the sense that it means that change is going to come eventually. Right. You know, whether that's tomorrow or that's a year from now or even longer, you know, it's like you said, it's a sign of it growing up and changing and becoming something more reputable. Yeah. So we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, apparently every time I think this story is done and couldn't get weirder, it gets weirder. (laughs) So we'll see what happens in the next 24 hours and talk to you tomorrow. Oh, boy. Uh, Number two on the Roper Report. China is freezing game approvals. This is from Bloomberg and a sequel to Monday's story with Gary Widow. And we were talking about, hey, Monster Hunter World just got blocked in China. That's weird. They took that down and there was some bureaucratic thing. Who knows? It's a lot worse than we thought. And it's a long article I'm reading from Bloomberg here. So stick with me. China's regulators have frozen approval of game licenses. I don't know why I'm off today. Licenses amid a government shakeup, according to people familiar with the matter, throwing the world's biggest gaming market into disarray. The halt follows a restructuring of power among departments, said the people who asked not to be named because they don't have approval to discuss the issue publicly. Regulators have also been concerned about violence and gambling in some games, according to one person. Online, mobile, and console games have all been affected. The whole sector has been rattled as gaming companies from online giant Tencent Holdings Limited to small developers await approvals. Tencent, the country's gaming and social media Goliath, has shed more than $160 billion in market value since its January peak, while smaller players complain they are struggling to survive without new titles. Tencent confirmed that there has been a temporary suspension as it, is, as it reported earned as it reported earnings Wednesday. Its profit fell for the first time in at least a decade. Results, results it said, were due in part to the inability to profit from its most popular games, including the hit P- Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Quote, at this point in time, we don't have visibility on when exactly the official approval will start yet, said President Martin Lau on a conference call with investors. We do believe it's not a matter of whether these games will be approved for monetization, but a matter of when. Dozens of companies may be affected. Tencent and NetEase Incorporated are among the biggest game distributors in China, and they license titles from some of the world's biggest developers, including Activision Blizzard Incorporated and Electronic Arts Incorporated in the U.S. and Capcom Co. in Japan. Uh, Nexon Co. gets 45% of its revenue from Tencent, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Japanese game makers fell sharply after Bloomberg reported the freeze. Nexon plunged 5.9%, while Capcom dropped 2.7%. Uh, Konami Holdings corporate, uh, Corp uh, slid 4.2% to its lowest close in more than a year. Tencent shares fell 3.6% in Hong Kong trading, and then its New York traded ADRs plunged as much as 10%. NetEase fell as much as 5.8% in the U.S. trading, while Shanghai based blibbly blibbly Billy, 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 Incorporated plunged as much as 13%. Quote, China's whole online gaming industry is having some issues, not only because of regulation, but also because Chinese gamers are becoming more mature and selective. Sean Yang, executive director of Blue Lotus Capital Advisors, said on Bloomberg Television. Even if the regulators resume approvals immediately, the typical process takes about two to three months, signaling potential weakness in the third quarter for companies like Tencent. The halts come as China's internet sector is undergoing a stringent crackdown ahead of an important Communist Party gathering later this year. 
Tencent has been forced to curb playing time for children as regulators step up scrutiny on online gambling and gaming addiction. A long piece, but incredibly, incredibly important when we talk yes. about the dominoes of mm -hmm. video games and what we're doing here, right? Lots Tencent has their fingers in every pie. We've talked about, you've seen them pop up that they own part of this company, they own part of that company. If 10 cent shares fall, if their investors run away, if they can't publish in their biggest sector, that radiates here like that. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, they were already talking about the fact, right, that uh, 10 cent NetEase, uh, they license stuff from Activision, EA. If you can't, make those games anymore and they stop buying those licenses, the profits of the American Western companies start to shrink as well. Like this could be a huge fucking problem soon. Uh, yeah, that's putting it lightly too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this doesn't surprise me too much though. Um, China has always had very strict regulations on video games and right. entertainment and media. And that's just because of the nature of their culture and their politics and whatnot, you know? So I don't think that's necessarily the fault of anyone. Oh, sure. Uh, but gosh, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Um, yeah, it's all, I mean, all it is at this point is, hey, a red flag over there, guys. Because yeah. who knows, maybe it doesn't reverberate back here and then, but. but oh, it will. It will. <laughs> In some Eventually. way, this is going to reverberate back. And like he, they're talking about potential uh, quarter threes being weak. That's, it, they're saying, if it comes back now. If yeah. like today they're like, all right, the freeze is over, start publishing your games and they have to just ramp up production and get back to where they were, mm -hmm. then you're going to see a dip. What if the they still are frozen for another month? Right. What if it pushes that? Uh, and then you're talking about, yeah, how in March the fiscal year is going to close out for Activision, how it's going to close out for PlayStation, mm -hmm. how it's going to close out for everybody else. Like it's something to watch and pay attention to and figure out what's going on. But it's going to be interesting, especially... Mm -hmm. Just ten cent, man. They are everywhere. They really are. <laughs> they are everywhere, and it was like you kept seeing it happening. Of like, oh, they bought this. They've done this. They're part of this. And if they fucking have to retract, right? If they have to recede back and like f fix their bottom lines, that's when you start think see seeing uh, companies get cut. You start seeing the layoffs. You start seeing all these different things come out. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be fascinating in a horrible, horrible way, but fascinating. Oh yeah. <laughs> Number three. Now here, it's Coke media, right? I believe so. I mean, it's Koch pretty clearly, but everybody says Coke, and I'll, I'll play along. I'll play along with this thing. Coke media has bought the licenses for Time Splitter and Second Sight. And I say licenses, they've bought the properties, Time Splitters and Second Sight. Coke media, of course, owned by THQ Nordic, as THQ Nordic continues to do this weird thing of bringing back all these things that are dead. You know what? Nostalgia sells. We'll see. Let me read this first. <laughs> Coke Media put out this release. It is with great pleasure that Coke Media today announces the acquisition of the cherished video game series Time Splitters. The agreement sees Coke Media become the owners of the intellectual property and the rights to create video games based on the brand, which will be produced by the Coke Media's publishing label, Deep Silver. Largely considered as one of the most influential console games of the early 2000s, Time Splitters was originally created by Free Radical Design, who later became Crytek UK Limited, and finally, Deep Silver Dam Buster, also part of the Coke Media family. The three game series, the three game series, should have a hyphen there, earned a large and passionate fan base thanks to its unique humor, art style, and pop culture references, while encouraging customization and modification to give each person their own individual experience. Quote, we are hugely excited to have acquired Time Splitters, commented Clemens Kondratis, uh, CEO of uh, Coke Media GmbH. Quote, the original games gave fans a massive content a massive content offer and provided a pure and genuinely fun arcade shooter experience. We have many fans of the Time Splitter series among our own staff who are passionate about creating a product that will thrill today's gaming audience. In addition to Time Splitters, Coke Media has or have also acquired the IP and the rights to science fiction action adventure game Second Sight. Also conceived by Free Radical Design, Second Sight was originally released in 2004 and follows the adventures of an America parasi American parapsychology researcher who undertakes missions alongside a band of U.S. US Marines using a mix of gun combat and stealth gameplay. Forthcoming Second Sight products will also be published by Deep Silver. Full details of future Time Splitters and Second Sight products will be revealed in due course. DH Canada writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Is THQ Nordic the hero we need and deserve? They are money balling their way into our hearts and hopefully wallets by buying up these old mid to low tier franchises, probably for cheap. I mean, they actually bought Time Splitters. There's been a fan made Time Splitters game in development for years already. Do you believe THQ will buy them out too so they can take they can take an already half done game and finish it themselves? Aiden, what is going on with THQ Nordic uh, slash Coke Media slash Deep Silver, all the like just one giant conglomerate all over there now, just doing all sorts of weird stuff. What are they doing? 
I wish I could tell you. Why? <laughs> I can't. THQ Nordic, when they came back and they're like, we're going to call ourselves THQ You're going to call yourself, you, you can pick any name you want out of the hat. You're going to pick THQ, a company that failed, and put Nordic on the end of it. And then you're going to keep getting THQ fucking game IPs and Darksiders and all this stuff. What are you doing? I don't know about these guys. They're living their best life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, so many people were rejoicing at this. And I, here's the thing. I love video games. And I love people making video games. And I love people giving people what they want. If THQ Nordic slash Coke Media slash Deep Silver is going to come out and give you the Tom Swinter game you always wanted, great. I just don't think... I don't... I I, I just don't understand. I don't understand either. I just either. feel like all the, they are buying mid-tier to low-tier game IPs, right? Yeah. And can those deliver? You say nostalgia, nostalgia is popular. I mean, I mean, we've seen that with Nintendo for years and years and years. Like sure. They keep playing on old franchises and old characters because they're close to people's hearts. So I don't right. necessarily think they're going for the wrong thing here. I guess my concern would be, and this is, I guess... I need to get somebody from THQ Nordic in here to talk to me and explain it. Yes, you do. Because my concern <laughs> is this, that it's not, hey, we're buy- buying these games and we know what we're doing as much as, hey, we're all a bunch of investors. We're all, we're a board of uh, directors. We are, we want the THQ, you know, THQ has a, a legacy to it. We want that. We're going to get all these other legacy games. And then are they expecting them to sell like juggernaut numbers? Are they expect, what do they expect for the new Darksiders, right? When they come out mm-hmm. and put this out there. That's a good point. Do they... If they're, I'm totally down for all this and, and go get them, guys. If it's that they've set the expectations correctly, mm-hmm. that they are expecting these games to sell all right, and that there is a passionate fan base for these, but not a huge fan base. Yeah. Now I could eat my words, and it could be another Crash Bandicoot situation. It could be another Spyro thing, where yeah, they they tap into a vein that I have no love for, but everybody else is crazy about. But I just don't know. I just I don't know. I mean, I wish I could tell you. And also, just put out one of these games. You right? keep buying things up and doing things. Let's publish something. Give me something. <laughs> Smelly Burrito 120, and then puts in parentheses, please, shoe. Hey, just just please. Uh, says, Dear Greg and Aiden. First off, welcome Aiden from Aiden from all the best friends. Much love. My question is, am I the only one who loved Time Splitters and is p- super pumped about the acquisition by THQ Nordic? I really don't understand how this company plans to make money. <laughs> While they are doing passion projects like Darksiders 3, does this mean we'll see more wi- we- see more weird continuations and revivals? I have dreamed of a new Time Splitter since Free Radical made Haze. Why just why? He says why just why. But also, yeah, Haze, what the fuck? Uh, do you think this means we'll see a new one? Thanks for all you do. The smelliest burrito on PSN. I don't think you're going to see new Hayes. Uh, the new time splitters. Yeah, you're definitely going to. I mean, that's why they're buying these things. Oh, yeah. They're buying them to make these things and put these titles in the box. But again, can a new time splitter. Is this going to be Twisted Metal again? Is it going to be? Oh, man, we all wanted that. I can't wait to see it next gen. You get it. You're like, oh, yeah, it's, it wasn't right. that great. Yeah, you know what I mean? I just. I'm boggled. I'm mind boggled by all this, Aiden. And I don't know where it's going to end up. I don't really know either, but I guess we're just have to wait and see. I guess so. That's the problem with all this. But hey, go get them, Coke Media. Uh, number four, NBA. The NBA is welcoming new franchi- franchises to the NBA 2K League. This is from Jacob Wolf over at ESPN. Uh, the NBA is welcoming franchises owned by the Atlanta Hawks, Brooklyn Nets, Los Angeles Lakers, and Minnesota Timberwolves to its NBA 2K League ahead of its second season. The four franchises will join the 17 NBA teams that participated in the inaugural NBA 2K League session which began in May and will conclude with its finals uh, with its first fi- uh, finals uh, event on August 25th in New York. The expansion price for the second season is the same as the first $750,000 for three years of participation, according to sources. Just a quick heads up if you care about NBA. It's cool to see esports still growing and them yeah. doing this and see real NBA teams making these teams to go play the game. That's cool. I think that's really neat. Um, and even like with the new game too, I think that they're making good moves. At least yeah. 2K is. Um, because they're adding women to the next game, sure. which I think is awesome, you know. But I well, that, honestly, I wish I knew more about this. But is two K adding women to this? Because I know NBA, I know NBA Live, NBA, NBA Live, NBA Live. Yeah, yeah, Did I get the wrong game? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whoops, yeah, no, I'm wrong. Fine. That's right. Yeah, we we crashed you before you got to your own, <laughs> and I'll tell you right now. So some of these kids out there are huge sports. Fan. I'm just kidding. Nobody watches this. That's a sports fan, but still cool. I think that like it's still here, really cool. Here's a question I have for you. So you're freelancing right now in 2018. Yep. Do you have to pay attention to esports or are you just like, that's not my wheelhouse and I don't worry about it? It's not my wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, I do some esports writing here and there. Um, I cover my esports community at my university. Yeah. That's about it. Um, but there are freelancers who do specifically esports writing. Um, gosh, I wish I could name her off the top of my head. 
uh, I don't know where I handle, but there are quite a few. Um, oh, sure. Specifically at Dottie Sports. I know Anna does a lot for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... I mean, I personally don't do it, so I don't really pay attention to it. Of course, yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to explain this to some people I was hanging out with when I was in Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. That w- I was out there to talk about gaming and being influencer slash press and all that jazz, but I was on a panel with other esports people. Mm-hmm. And so afterwards, they're like, oh man, like the, the audience was asking me about esports. And I'm like, you don't, gaming is an umbrella. It and really it, is. And the umbrella used to be small, and I could be under the umbrella and totally understand even the genres of games uh-huh. I didn't play. But now when it's like MOBAs and esports, I'm like, the umbrella's huge and you're oh, on the other right. side of yeah. it and I have you know, no idea. Like, I don't even think it's right to call it just gaming as an umbrella. Remember yeah. so than like geek culture. Sure. That's what I've started calling it because sure. it seems to encompass more than just like video games. You know, it encompasses video games, TV, anime, sports, things like that. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what the right answer is, but personally, you're not going to get much from me on this, unfortunately. That's fine. I have another question for you in What's this that? vein, though. So I think the question I get the most right is people who want to break in and want to do what we do, right? Mm-hmm. And my information now is so dusty and old. You know, 11 years ago was a lot different on how to get into all this. 12 years ago, how to do all this stuff. For you, what is your tip if somebody's watching this and they want to be oh a freelance writer, they want to review games, they want to you know make videos and podcasts and all that jazz? Uh, well, first off, just do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good. I, I give that advice. So I'm glad that's still, that holds uh, true. Just do it. Um, but my actually, I got my start in local news. Mm. Um, so I started at my high school paper, my college newspaper, and then a local news website in okay. Naples, Florida called Naples Herald. Okay. Um, and I was the only gaming journalist in that area. That's helpful. That, that helped for me too. That helped for me too. <laughs> and so, I mean, take advantage of the resources that you have. You yeah. know, um, talk to people in your area, like at your college paper, at your high school paper, tell them like, this is the kind of writing I want to do. I'm willing to do some stuff that I don't really like, but you got to give me a chance on this and take it. Just do it. Like talk to people, network on Twitter, um, get in the community. I mean, there's a bunch of uh, publications always looking for pitches and they usually announce that on Twitter. Uh, so. so yeah, that's that. That's interesting. I'm glad the part I still say of like get yeah. out there, like because that was my story too, right? Of yeah. like in, the, in I in at Mizzou, people knew I was the games guy, so they would come to oh, me yeah. and like, review Sims too. All right. Um, but how did you yeah go from I guess doing the Naples stuff to crossing over to writing for an IG and writing for a game? Um, I met the right people at the right time. Okay, that's that's in all honesty all I can say. Um, I am so lucky and so grateful to have the friends that I have in the industry, and I'm endlessly thankful for how they've helped me and how they've pushed me along. You know, uh, I think my internship had a big part to do with it. Um, plug to Pace Magazine. <laughs> 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 no, Holly and Ryan are absolutely fabulous editors and uh, they really pushed me and really challenged me uh, to do something out of my realm. Awesome. And um, I ended up getting to go to a bunch of different events and meeting the right people and making the right friends and asking questions. Yeah. Um, like, hey, do you know if there's any positions open at this particular publication? Um, that was a big thing for me. And so I got approached by those people and they asked me to apply for those positions. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. And so I'm so grateful for all of those people who have helped me along the way. Um, and also, I think another thing that's really important when you're getting into the industry, be mindful of the experiences of people around you mm. um, and be sensitive to the struggles of women, of minorities in the industry. Um, the more sensitive you are and the more kind you are, you'll be known for that. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a very, very small industry. 100%. Uh, yeah. And if you are not a great human being, people will find out. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that tends to spread, right? You, <laughs> yes. You can hide it as much as you want. It yeah, all no. gets aired out eventually. It'll be, it'll be found. Exactly, um, exactly. And so go into your stuff confidently, be open to feedback, and just be nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like you. You were a good pick to come on the show. <laughs> Number five and the final one on the Roper Report. Battlefield 5 pre-orders might be weak, question mark. Uh, Sarah Needleman over at the Wall Street Journal follow, filed the following. I'm just off today, Cool Greg, you know? Thank you, buddy. I'm trying, but I can tell you, I'm it's I'm <laughs> sputtering out here. Something's in the carburetor. I don't know how cars work. EA exec departure comes ahead of big game launch. This is from Market Talk. Uh, Electronic Arts chief design officer is leaving two months before the launch of the new installment of one of its biggest franchises, Battlefield. Of course, we talked about this yesterday. Patrick uh, Sutherland uh, is leaving. He's been with EA for nearly 20 years and worked out of its Dice Studio in Stockholm. That makes the and worked out of the Dice Studio in Stockholm. That makes the war themed video game series earlier this month. 
month, Cohen said pre-order sales of Battlefield 5 have been weak. It is due for a release in between Activision Blizzard's next Call of Duty game and Take-Two Interactive Software's Red Dead Redemption sequel, both of which Cohen says are showing are showing greater pre-order demand. Cohen says that Battlefield could suffer the same fate as EA's Titanfall 2, which was released in between two major game launches in 2016 and sold poorly. Interesting. Hmm. Well, who is Cohen? They keep calling him Cohen, but I don't have an introduction in this article. Hmm. Rip. Sorry. It's, <laughs> I, yeah, it, here's the thing. We're taking a quick aside. We'll get back to the story in a second. I feel for the Wall Street Journal and mm-hmm. I feel for Sarah Needleman because I found this off of Reset Era directing over her mm-hmm. and I went to her page to get it right. Of course, Wall Street Journal is behind a paywall, yep. so you can't just read the articles easily. So what Sarah does very smartly is take screenshots of her work and put it up on her Twitter. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed this screenshot off her Twitter, but clearly it's not the full story. But then I was like, man, that sucks. That you got to do that. Really you got to jump suck, in yeah. and do that to try to get your, you're making, you're doing good work and you want to share it with as many people as possible. So you have mm-hmm. to go all these workarounds. I digress. Wall Street Journal. That's how they are. And you got to try to turn a buck. You got to try to make it. It is Patreon. what it is. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Uh, back to this though. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That interesting idea. I, li- I like the the comparison to Titanfall 2. Of course, yeah. one of the games that buried Titanfall 2 was one of EA's games, but we digress. Oh, we won't even talk about that. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Battlefield 5 being sent out to die kind of thing in between that. Do you, do you, what do you think of that theory? I don't necessarily think it's being sent out to die per se i mean like i said before we're just gonna have to wait and see what actually happens but i mean the initial reception to it was not great yeah you know it was very mixed and um personally what i think they're doing in battlefield 5 is great (laughs) i appreciate that what a parse i don't remember i I don't remember i remember being a protagonist this time Ah, around ah Um, there it is yes okay yeah yeah. and so of course how dare they yeah i know right they're horrible how dare they she's an arm right she's a prosthetic arm yeah yeah. and it's actually historically (laughs) accurate nah with no historical accuracy your (laughs) horse uh, your historical accuracy Ah. yeah okay but um it's just it's interesting i guess because i feel i don't hear about Battlefield 5. I don't either. And that's weird you know, when you the, stop thinking about it. The, the only things that I really heard about it when it was first announced, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, and the whole big controversy surrounding the accuracy right. and of I the story that they're trying to tell. And, I, and I'm not a, a first person shooter guy. The war <laughs> games, you know what I mean? Like once in a while, you'll have a cool story and I'll jump in. But I definitely hear way more about Call of Duty. Like these oh, yeah. betas they're running in, in Blackout and it's going to, you know, oh, yeah. quads and all these different things for their battle realm. But I know about Call of Duty. That's on my horizon. I can tell you what Call of Duty looks like. Mm-hmm. Battlefield 5, yeah, it is like that thing of like, oh, wait, are they still talking about that? Is that happening? What's going on with it? I them? don't know. Maybe they just step back for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I guess you're getting closer. You know, maybe you, they're waiting to push hard when it comes October, but it, they do. I mean, call, clock is ticking. Exactly. Call of Duty and uh, uh, Red Dead are right there, and that is going to be a huge problem for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I missed that and I didn't, you know, put it all together with uh, Sutherland being from there. But so an interesting thing. We'll see if it actually shakes out, but pre orders apparently are soft and we'll see what goes on. Oh, yeah. Aiden. Time to shine. Yeah, but don't don't give it away. Don't give it away. So uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how that one works out, but it's just so far away. If I want to know what came to the mom and grab shops today, though, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today. Coffee Crisis on Xbox One, Fern's Gate on Xbox One, Hero Defense on Xbox One, State of Mind on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, uh, Wailing Heights on Xbox One, uh, there's a new Fortnite patch that adds heavy sniper rifles in a new mode called Soarin' 50s, it's 50 versus 50, where you can redeploy your uh, glider when you want to, if you have the height, and then Graveyard Keeper is on Xbox Game Pass, you know somebody who worked on this. I do. New dates for you. Oh, New dates. Uh, so, Gone Home Switch comes out on August 23rd, uh, and Unearthly Marge 2 is out on PSVR on the 18th. Of September. Of September. Thank you. No problem. I was just, I was just transitioning. You just took it over. You're perfect. You did great. Why, thank you. Deals of the day for you. Uh, Walmart's <laughs> got a Nintendo Switch bundle for you starting September 5th for $359.99. You can get Wolf. the Nintendo Switch and digital download codes for Mario Tennis Aces and 1-2 Switch all in one bundle. Why not? Right. Right. Uh, Reader mail. But first, I'm going to tell you it's brought to you by Brooklinen.com and Stamps.com. Let's start with Brooklinen. Ladies and gentlemen, do you go to Instagram.com slash Game Over Greggy? I know the answer is yes. I see you looking at it. Uh, Let me tell you, when you see Portillo on my bed, he is on Brooklinen sheets. I love my Brooklinen sheets. I am 100% serious about this. Why do I like them? They're super soft and comfortable. Uh, And then getting them was easy. You go to Brooklinen.com. You go there. You can mix and match everything. You can see how it complements your home decor. I know. I, I realize now that I have home decor thanks to this ad. Um, 
But you go through there, you select, you mix, you match, you get it, and you get it cheap. Uh, Brooklinen.com says that, you know, luxury sheets should be there without the luxury markup. Most betting is marked up as much as 300%. Their method is to take out the middleman, keep things personal. That's right, just between them and the customer. Uh, you can get $20 off and free shipping when you go to Brooklinen.com and use the promo code GAMES at checkout. Brooklinen is so sure. You'll love the new sheets that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all of their sheets and comforters. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code GAMES at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code GAMES. Brooklinen. These really are the best sheets ever. Porty agrees. Next up is stamps.com. You know it. I know it. Aiden knows it. I do know you it. need to put stamps on stuff to mail stuff. You do. We all have to mail stuff, but we all hate leaving our houses, don't we? Snail mail. The video games are in the house usually. That's where I want to stay. Stamps.com makes it easy. Uh, we are using it here at the office. What is it exactly, though? I'll tell you. With Stamps.com, you can access all the services of the post office right from your desk. You can buy and print real U.S. postage and for, or I'm sorry, for any letter or any package. It's all available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know that the post office is not open that, like that. And you just click print, mail, and you're done. Stamps.com will even send you a digital scale. How do I know? Because over on Cool Greg's desk, there is a digital scale. He is using Stamps.com because we forced him to mail everything for us, and now it's easy. He doesn't have to waste a whole afternoon walking over there trying to buy stamps, talk to somebody. He just does it online, prints it there, gives it to the mailman, and we're done. No fuss, no must. Right now, use KF Games, all one word, for this special offer, a four-week trial. It includes postage and a digital scale. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in KF Games. That's stamps.com. Enter KF Games. Whew. Ooh. You know? Oof. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you're running through and you got to do all this stuff. You got to talk about the stamps. Here comes Kevin. How you doing, Kev? Yeah? Howdy. He's set up for a party mode, so you never know if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. Oh, boy. Because there's always complications. Uh, Ziger <laughs> writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Good morning, Greg, and our wonderful guest slash person slash friend, Aiden. This isn't so much a question about gaming, more a personal question towards Aiden. Aiden, did you ever see yourself ending up here? What is going through your mind right now? From Hat Rack to Games Daily Show host, you've done a ton of amazing things in the time that I've known you, and I couldn't be prouder. Keep up the amazing work, Hart. Also, if you aren't wearing a lot of hats right now, I'm telling VJ on you. I don't understand these references. I understand these references. <laughs> what is Hat Rack? Uh, okay, so first off, hi, Zyger. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am sorry to disappoint you with my lack of hats. Uh, so Hat Rack is a joke from Viking Jesus' stream from last year. Oh. And we dumped like 50 hats on my head. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> makes more sense. So that's Hat Rack. Um, eventually, Hat Rack will return, I'm sure. Of course. All good ideas do. <laughs> but to answer your question, Zyger, um, no. <laughs> I never saw myself ever being here. Yeah. Um, How long ago did you, would you say this journey started for you? And I mean, obviously you talk oh about gosh. high school journalism stuff. Yeah. Was the idea similar to me of I'm going to go work, I'm going to get a journalism degree to write about games? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I actually discovered that my senior year of high school oh, after awesome. my friend dragged me in to be a copy editor. Yeah. <laughs> right. I was actually a creative writer at first. Okay. Okay. And, no um, money there. Yeah. No, definitely no money there. Not uh, like the big video game journalism books. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Please go to Patreon. Rolling in the big dough. Totally. <laughs> you know the freelance paychecks you're getting left and right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Minnesota coming out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, no, I, um, this call kind of started about four years ago for me. Okay. Um, I actually started freelancing on my 18th birthday. Okay. Uh, and I started out volunteering, you know, and then working with my school papers and, I really fell in love with journalism in high school because I ended up like becoming the entire paper uh, yeah. just by nature of high school journalism. That, that's it. Me too. That <laughs> tends to be how it happens, right? That the person who actually is oh, yeah, like no. the passion, you're doing everything. Oh yeah, no. And I mean, it was fine. I worked with amazing people and they were super talented sure. and I, I miss them every day, you know? Um, but they really inspired me to just go on this crazy life and journey of mine. And now I'm here and I don't know how I did this. <laughs> <laughs> you just talked to us at RTX. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally by chance. <laughs> this is the problem with all you young kids, though, and that I've noticed. You know what I mean? Is that you're all coming in and you're too good too early. Yeah, right. A lot of you all come in, even like it's you, it's Alana, all these people. Are, and I ask how old you are, and I'm like fucking sick, sick to my stomach. Because you know, I wasn't at 22. I wasn't Children. even. I wasn't even what I was still in Missouri, right? Trying to make all this happen, try to get out here. And uh, the thing I've noticed, and that's awesome, is 
I feel like as good as I am, right, in terms of it being a skill and a muscle that I flex doing the podcast and, you know, knowing video games it is to the level I know video games because somebody's out there like, this guy doesn't know jack shit. Um, oh, yeah, no, it's okay. It's the, <laughs> the the new breed of people. You, you know, the, your Alex O'Neill's, uh, mm-hmm. Roger Porconi, the people who have grown up consuming the content and then making it on their own on YouTube channels or writing on their own mm-hmm. on blogs are already so so far ahead where I was when I started. You know what I mean? The fact yeah. that, yeah, you can come in and like you texted me beforehand, right? Like, cool, heads up. I don't have a lot on camera and VO experience. <laughs> and like, you're destroying it. Nobody would know that. Well, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, you're a natural because all you're doing is coming in and being yourself and talking about the things you know and love. Like, oh, yeah, that's all course. it is, right? Yeah. You know, and first off, thank you for complimenting our generation. Uh, I think that's awesome. Well, I want to um, make sure somebody takes, your generation takes care of me when oh, yeah. you know, it's time oh, to put Greg don't down. He was, we got nice. you, Greg. he was nice. They're we all, got your back. You're all there with your Terminator wear on. <laughs> <laughs> he was nice to us. Keep him alive. Um, but no, I mean, it's been crazy to me because like a couple years ago, like all the people that I knew were 5, 10, 20 years older than me. Sure. You know, and like that was great because like, wow, so many mentors, so many people to show me the way, you know. Uh, but now like I'm seeing so many people who are, are like my age. Yeah. And that's so cool. Yeah. I'm actually older than some people now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I've said it a few times, but this was the PAX East where it all caught up to me, mm-hmm. where I like seven or eight different people came up like, Greg Miller, holy shit, I'm a big fan. This is our first time being media. I'm like, oh, that's right. He's like, Aww. I've been listening to you since junior high. I'm like, don't say that. Don't say that. I'm not that old. <laughs> Holy shit. You're the, oh my God. Junior high and you're here working. And I'm like knocking beers out of their hand. And I'm like, you're not of age. I'm 23. <laughs> oh, fuck God. Horror is horrible. Uh, Viking Jesus writes in the kind of slash KF GD and says, hi, Greg and Aiden. Important question that I've never heard you cover on this show. If gaming, if gaming journalism was a sandwich, what, who, what would be the mustard? Please interpret this question any way you like. Thanks and stay fresh. Now this is Viking Jesus. This is VJ from Zyger's question. Yes. Yes. And, and what? And this is the streaming and the hats and all this. Yes. Jazz. Okay. This okay. is my boy Mika man. Is this a long running joke? This is a sandwich. I know this joke. Okay. I know this joke, but I can't remember the answer. And if gaming journalism was a sandwich, what would be the mustard? I know this joke. I'm so sad. I can't gaming remember journalism it. Journalism wasn't. And I, and I get to interpret it however I want to. So I got to think. I'm going to say let's plays. Let's plays. Okay, we'll no, go for it. That's what I'm going to say. You let Viking Jesus down. He's very mad at you. Yeah, I know. Marco <laughs> Hutchins writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, KFGD, how do you feel about beating slash completing games? Do you feel like it's a sign of respect that it shows how much you enjoy a game? I'm pretty sure you said you don't think anyone should feel, should feel guilty over quitting a game they don't like, which I agree with. But if someone claims to love a game and hasn't beaten it, do you think that should de-eval- devalue their opinion a little bit? Personally, I try to beat almost all of my games, all of the games I buy, uh, by any means just to... Man, I fucked that about bad. I thought I, could, I thought midway I'd be able to recover it, but then you there was a jump. Help? There was a page <laughs> jump. No, I got it. Personally, I try to beat almost all of the games I buy as a means of justifying the purchases. But I'm sure it's much different for you guys getting codes for games and then also having to jump ship in order to play the most relevant games. Thanks for being great, Marco. I got some feelings, Marco. Lay them on me. <laughs> So first off, I, games are games, you know, you like them, you like them, and if you don't, you don't. I mean, I don't think that completing a game or being a game or whatever is good or bad, mm, you know? Mm. You play a game to enjoy is a form of entertainment, yeah. and I don't think it's a, like, oh wow, look at me, I did this awesome thing in this video game, I beat it to completion, yeah. respect me. No, I don't, I don't think that should happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, I've completed a bunch of games. Sure you have. You know, um, and I have enjoyed them thoroughly. I have played so many to death and I have never been able to complete them just because the achievements are ridiculous. So you uh, mean roll credits or you mean like get a platinum or a thousand uh, achievements? I mean, I'm not sure what they mean by completing. I yeah, mean, yeah. for me, completing is like, Achievements, trophies. Uh, Oh, okay. I think for him, he's saying roll credits. Oh, roll credits? beat a game. Oh, my gosh. You know, that doesn't really matter either. Like, (laughs) oh, wow. I beat a game to its credits. Awesome. You know, I've done that a million times. But that doesn't mean that my opinion is any better or worse than anyone else who's played it and enjoyed it or disliked it. Uh, Yeah, I think it's a sliding scale. And I think... It's uh, what we talked about before here, Marco, recently too, with games, with Andrea in terms of she doesn't review games, she just gives opinions on them, and we review kind of, but we mm-hmm. don't in the classic IGN sense anymore, and yada, yada, yada. Where I feel like it all depends, as long as whoever you're talking to is being upfront about their experience, oh, yeah. right? Like, that's the thing is, like, I, I, you know, like, you're not taking a shot at me, I know, Marco, but like, I didn't beat Persona 5. 
I love Persona 5. I did neither. I thought Persona 5 that was last, great. That last dungeon is ridiculous. I didn't even get that close. I, I played like 30 hours of it and I was like, I just don't, I just don't have 30 the time. 30 hours is still a really big commitment. Exactly, though. but it's still 60 hours short of maybe finishing the game. More power to you. I know, <laughs> but I, I feel that I'm able to say I liked Persona 5. That I think Persona 5's a great step forward for the thing, the stylization, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. But I, whenever I talk about Persona 5, I qualify with that I didn't beat it because I do want that out there. So it's not, I don't even so much that it's like, I think it's relevant information that yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to talk to the last dungeon. I'm not going to be able to talk to how the credits rolled or what oh, this yeah, no, was. And yeah. I, think, I think that's really important. I yeah. think that we all need to be more candid about like, not necessarily our biases. I mean, yes, we definitely need to be more candid about our biases. Yeah. But in this particular case, like, oh yeah, you know, I only beat it to this point. So... I don't really have a lot of information. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, like right? Like, and that's like, I don't want ever, ever to say something about it and somebody takes it as, oh, well, that's Greg's review of it, right? Because, you know, yeah, Greg, that's you're not, wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he didn't even fucking roll cards. He doesn't know what's happening. Like, it's a weird thing, but I, I feel, I mean, to Marco's point, like, I understand what Marco's saying of when I buy the game, I try to beat the game, right? And, like, yeah, go through of course. It. I mean, games are an investment. Exactly. And I get that. And he brings up the fact that it's different for us. Like, how does it work for you as a freelancer, right? Like, are well, you usually I pitch? Don't, are you I don't doing, do a ton of games reviews. Okay. Yeah, you're doing features, right? I've been trying to get to that world. Yeah. Uh, cause I do like doing game reviews. Yeah. Um, I did several when I was at paste. Um, but I mean, for me, I, I'll play a game until I feel like I'm done with it, Yeah. you know? And when it comes to reviews, yeah, I definitely try to play it until the credits just because that's the right thing to do. So you sure. see every aspect of it. But I mean, sometimes when you're in a time crunch, you can't see all the side content. You yeah. can't always get to the credits. I yeah. mean, like an 80 hour game, like persona, you'd have to have a lot of time on your hands to, in order to be able to finish that in Go time for, for a review, yeah. you know? So some things that I kind of appreciate in the industry, like they've been doing reviews in progress. Yeah. Um, that's something I think is great. Yeah. Um, he, and I think part of this question comes up from the zeitgeist right now that was around uh, Klepix non-review yeah. of what was it? Uh, uh, we Happy Octopath. Few. Oh, no, We Happy wait, Few? Wait, what was it? What did you say? I thought it was Octopath. Well, maybe he did it for that too, but I know I, I think it was recently We Happy Few where he's like, I played five hours of it and I, I just can't get compelled to go back. And it wasn't maybe labeled. It, was we it wasn't labeled review. It was, it was like a non-review review of like, yeah. this is, I'm giving, and I thought presenting that context makes that not opinion more valid or valid period, but yeah. it's great information for where he's coming from with the PCs right now. Yeah, no, I mean, and as a journalist, you need to stand by that stuff. Yeah. You know, you need to say like, Hey, this is, let me be forward with who I am, my experience with this because X, Y, Z. Yeah. And so I think that's important. Yeah. For us, I mean, Marco, for like me and kind of funny, it's always interesting and hard. And I know we get shit sometimes from people who say we don't beat enough games or play enough games. Or that we get paid for reviews. <laughs> I know they know we don't because <laughs> we we're begging on Patreon. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for us, it is that thing of like, you know, when a new code comes in and hopping around it's i can never i've i've lost the ability ever to predict what i'm going to play and beat and what i'm going to be able to mm -hmm. go do this like i've talked about it before like you know octopath for me is something i really 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 want to beat mm -hmm. but now it's got the september whatever 25th uh, deadline of valkyria chronicles and oh I, boy and i say that and that totally negates the fact that spider-man's imminent and when spider-man gets here everything fucks off like spider-man's uh guaranteed i'm seeing everything oh, yeah. doing everything platinuming everything because that's just who I am about that game mm -hmm. and franchise. But like if I fall off Octopath's train, like do I ever get back on later? Like I hope I do. Like I, I feel oh, yeah. like that's a game that pops in and out. But like I felt that way about Catherine when I took a week long break Catherine from Catherine. Is such a good game. And I came back to Catherine. I was like, I don't even remember how to build the things anymore. Like move the blocks around and do the tornado method. I was like, I can't play this anymore. And like, I don't mm -hmm. want to restart it because I was already so many hours in and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that sucked. But I feel like you just can't predict where it all goes anymore. No, you really can't. You know, so I you think can, you just got to do what you got to do and roll with the punches. And then you, we give you the authentic, real answers of where we are and what we did and why it went the way it did. Yeah. I mean, and you should be able to trust us to do that too. I am on a plane tomorrow and I'm playing Octopath, so don't worry. Final question of the day comes from Sheem. Sheem writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, what's popping KFGD? Cool, Greg, what's popping over there? All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> is it just me or are the big game media sites sleeping on Smash Ultimate? I barely see coverage other than the direct stay up. Uh, the, other than the direct, period. Stay up. Cool, Greg, is that what cool kids are saying now? Stay up? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm not one of the cool kids. I don't know that. You've been saying that for a while, cool, Greg? <laughs> okay. You know I mean, like tagging? I mean, that's how we use it. Stay up. Okay. Some people say, like, stay up. Stay watch the movie. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. Stay up. Stay up. Yeah, no, I go. Um, <laughs> do you think people are sleeping on Smash the big sites? I don't. I don't know because I haven't really done a cover, ton of coverage myself. Yeah. Um. I mean, there honestly hasn't been too much news coming out of it other than the directs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the, the Smash is in a, in a weird place in terms of being slept on. 
I do think it's not getting talked about as much as, say, the last Smash did, you know, Smash Wii U or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because it's still quite a ways out, yeah, right? And it's in still terms pretty of, ambiguous too. It's it's we're not getting until December, and then when we do get a direct, it's a huge drop and all this information. Mm-hmm. And it is this weird thing of I'm super excited for Smash, but I wouldn't say it's one of my most anticipated titles oh, yeah. of the year. And I feel it seems to be the case for a lot of people where it's like, oh, I can't wait for Smash, but. It doesn't. It doesn't seem. I'm not insulting. It, it doesn't seem like a huge step forward. No. It seems like the ultimate Smash Brothers. Everything's in it. Everything's yeah. there. Awesome. And that's great. That's awesome. And that's so. It's an iteration on something we already know we love. So yeah, all right, cool. When it gets here, it'll get here. And yeah. I don't know. Right. But as you get closer, I think that's when you'll really see people start ramping up coverage and doing. Oh character yeah, breakdowns. for sure. And of course, Tim can't wait and is planning an entire games cast about it next week. So oh boy, get ready for that. Aiden. What's up? It's time to squat up. Time to squat this up. This is where one of you. It's squat up. It's time to stay up. So we're going to stay up and squat up. Okay? <laughs> this is where one of you writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody has good times playing games together. Today, Connor needs help on PlayStation 3. He needs it on PlayStation 3, everybody. This is not a joke. PSN name, The Hotter Potato. All one word. The Hotter Potato. It says, hey, KF GD crew. I am looking to posse up in Red Dead Redemption on PS3. I am trying to get the platinum trophy, but these few online trophies are giving me trouble. I'm looking for some other kind of funny best friends who are willing to put up an hour of work using this trophy guide. And he says it's a bit.ly link that then ends RDR squad up all one word, all lowercase to get trophies for being the leader of an eight person gang, winning three free for all matches in a row and winning three team death matches in a row. These are by far the hardest and most annoying trophies of the bunch. And it will help anyone else who posse who posses up on their way to the platinum before red dead redemption two as well. Just friend request me on PSN at The Hotter Potato. I'm also in the KFBF Discord at The Hotter Potato as well. Thanks for such great daily content. Eh. P.S. What are your hopes for what Red Dead uh, Redemption 2 Online looks like? What would it take for you to get into it? Do you have hopes for Red Dead Online? I actually could never get into the first one. What? what, what? I know, I the know. The game it's a period or online? The whole game. The whole game. Oh my God. The whole oh my game. God. No, I take back works. everything I said about you. Cool, Greg, <laughs> cut the mics. The show's over. <laughs> no, that's understandable. All right, so now where do you. Uh, Nick? I might. Oh, ha- no. You might have to oh, remove no. her at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Um, so you're, you, what didn't work for you the first time around and do you see anything being different the second time? It was just too overwhelming for me. Oh, like it was huh. too open, yeah. you know, and I have lots of games that are like that. Sure. True. 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 Um, I just, you know, I appreciated the environment. I appreciated the detail and the level of like scrutiny that Rockstar went oh, to when they made the game, you know, and published it too. But I just, uh, it was not for me. Okay. You know? Okay. And so as far as hopes, I hope that it's a little bit more engaging for like the everyday person you sure. know, more so than like the hardcore fan okay. um you know and that's all i can really say like i never got into gta either for the same reason understandable okay, okay. so i'll allow it i'll allow it okay uh, i'm glad you'll allow it <laughs> the hotter potato red dead online i haven't thought about what what i want out of red dead online i, I just want red dead redemption to the story and then mm-hmm. i'll worry i'm sure online will be fine uh, hopefully if it works out of the box and we all get into it it'll be a better experience than gta online mm-hmm. where it didn't work None of us played it. Years later, we tried to get into it, and it's like, that's what we're t- you're talking about. Where we got in there, we're like, I what don't understand is what the fuck. There's cars <laughs> flying, there's jets, the, the menus are all weird. I can't yeah. figure out how to get in the same group. No mas. Aiden. What's up? I feel like I've done a lot of pregnant pauses today. I'm pretty proud of that. Like, you have. Nice hold You've done a very good job. Thank you. It's time for You're Wrong. This is where one of you writes in. To, well, you're watching live. Oh but you write into oh uh, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screwed up as we screwed it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash games and listening on podcast services around the globe. Motherfucker. This is, we're not wrong, but this is exciting and it shows they've been lying to us forever. Lucar Wolf writes in and says, Breaking news via Reset Era. Details for Diablo 3 for Switch have been released early by mistake by Forbes. It's called Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. It's coming this year and it will have Switch exclusive cosmetics themed around The Legend of Zelda. This sounds fucking awesome. Uh, yeah. Diablo 3 is awesome. <laughs> I love Diablo 3 and I'm totally down for all this. It will include all the previous DLC and will cost $59.99. Uh, that's from Reset Era. We will see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Thank you, Luke Harwell. Um, 
No, no. Ignacio is trying to correct me on stupid things that uh, Nick did in the other show. I'm not going to do that. But then he says, Ignacio Rojas, uh, Justin Davis is editorial manager, according to his oh, Twitter bio. thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Now I understand. I'm like, why did Lord of Pwn say this? Lord of Pwn usually on it. He is on it. I said, no sports fans watch this. Of course, it's a joke. Lord of Pwn responds, I'm a sports slash esports fan and I watch the show. I actually turned out a job with the Minnesota Timberwolves years ago. Cool. Good for you, my and dude. I was just joking. I know people like sports. I'm just kidding around. Uh, more Diablo 3 is breaking that. Uh, you know, it's all about that. Great. Mm hmm. No, hold on. Uh, Charles J, you get the floor. I didn't get to proofread all of it. Uh, THQ and subsidiaries. It's worth reading up on the CEO as he essentially expects most of the projects to make about $50,000 a year. Huh? Uh, but they own hundreds of IPs and want to further expand. They are excellent at budgeting and keeping deadlines, which seems to be how they keep their production costs lower. Quote from Lars Wingifor, CEO of THQ Nordic via GameSpot. Quote, THQ spent $50 million making Darksiders 2. We can produce a product of the same quality, but for a lower cost. $50 million is ridiculous. All right, you're winning me over, Lars. I personally think Europeans have a better appreciation of THQ, Deep Silver, etc. because they help publish games in Europe from, mm, EG, yeah. from EG Atlas, who up until recently never published in Europe. Okay, cool. I need to get these. I need to get somebody from THQ Nordic in here. Mm -hmm. Kevin! Kevin, get THQ Nordic on the phone. He's actually on it right now. Oh, thank you oh, very much. <laughs> um, okay, We Happy Few was the game. Thank you, Lord of Fun, they were talking about. I said, can you get me THQ Nordic on the phone? I cannot. Oh, okay. Well, I'll look into it myself then. And uh, that's pretty much it. More Diablo stuff. I said I cannot. Th I know. I appreciate that, Kevin. The mic wasn't on. Oh, oh okay. No, I said. Oops. <laughs> the mic wasn't on. <laughs> All right. Great, Kevin. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Kinda Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. We'd love it if you were part of the show, so go to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, then watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, and listen on podcast services around the globe. What's up, Kev? You trying to go to Spawn Gobble? No, 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 no. Thank you, though. Sorry, I love you. I'll figure out lunch on my own. Um, tomorrow, uh, me, Kevin, Tim, and Nick are on a super secret mission with Cisco. Are we saying where? We're Minnesota. We're going to Minnesota. Uh, we can't tell anything else about it. So we have to give up the flights. Or no, Nick is still here tomorrow, but he'll be yeah. uh, Friday. He's going to the thing. Crazy. There's a meeting here, you know? We're giving up the sticks. Uh, Jared Petty's taking control of Kind of Funny Games Daily for the oh next boy. two shows. That'll be fun. I know he's bringing in Chastity, and then I've already forgotten the other person he's bringing in because oh, no. I'm a dick. And I don't remember things because there's a lot of things going on for me to try to remember and not do. Uh, Aiden, you were fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. I'm very proud of myself for not saying Aiden this whole time. Because as I told yes, you in text message. I am message, very proud of you too. <laughs> fucking Beyond Two Souls broke me. Damn David Cage on these it's interviews. Okay. Uh, I get on a lot. If people want to keep up with you, Aiden, where do they go? Uh, well, I live on Twitter. Uh, at <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Okay. Uh, I live on Twitter uh, at Astra. Uh, which that's A S T R A W W, um, and that's about it. Okay. I mean, all of my handles are always A Straw, so you can probably look me up if you really, really want to. Uh, but that's about it. Okay, yeah. toss her a follow. See the stuff she's working on that she can't talk about. Uh, I assume since you're local, you, you'll be back, right? Of course. All right. What? 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 what are you saying? <laughs> Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's been our pleasure to serve you. Thanks, man. You're awesome.